Welcome to Electro Online. Even though we've talked about this before and we've seen an example of it before, now we're going to formally introduce it as the empirical rule for the standard deviation. What is the empirical rule? Well, assuming that we have a data set that has a normal distribution, we call that a typical bell curve like this. So if the data set looks like this, this would be what we would consider a nice random data set. Then, if that's true, once we calculate the standard deviation, and the standard de deviation will be calculated like this, well, it's actually the square root of that. So it's the square root of this. So it's the square root of this. And so you can see that we take the variance, take the square root of the variance, we get the standard deviation. And then if we find the mean or the average of our data set, and then we add one sigma to that average and subtract one sigma from that average, we know that about 68% of the entire data set will fall within plus or minus one sigma from the mean, and that's how we say it. So if this is five and the sigma is one, for example, for example, if sigma is equal to one and the mean is equal to five, then that would be the average, this would be six, this would be four, and then you can see that 68% can be predicted to fall between four and six. If we then go out an additional sigma, we go out two sigma and minus two sigma, so this would be seven and this would be three, then we can be assured that nearly 95%, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, but very close to 95% of all the data will fall between three and seven. And then if we go out one additional sigma, the mean plus three sigma and the mean minus three sigma, then you could say that almost 100%, 99.7% of your data will fall within 2 and 8. For example, if your data set consists of a thousand data points, you'd expect that maybe 3 out of a thousand will fall outside the range from 2 to 8, and the other 997 would fall within the range of 2 to 8. And that's what we call the empirical rule if our data set has a normal distribution. And so once we calculate the mean and the standard deviation, then we pretty well know what values will fall within a certain range and what percent of our values will fall within a certain range away from the mean. And that is how it's done.